Guys, it's that time again to step in the ring with the greatest tag team in podcast history. Just Freak Wrestling, the JFW podcast, hosted by Travis Steve. I'm Dizzle J. Guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, congratulations, because you're watching the very first video recording of the podcast, season three premiere even. Season three new me? Season, th- no, I don't want to, I can't no, do that. No, don't no, do that. No, no, no. 2019 was the new us. 2019 was definitely a new us. Yeah, 2019 was definitely a new us. But guys, we are here. Now you can see video. Now you can see us. And I know you're thinking, like, holy shit, camera really puts on 20 pounds. Yes, it does. Thinner than you think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, God, gotcha. yeah. I'm thinking it puts on about 30 pounds. But 30, yeah, I guess. 30, I'll agree with 30. 30. I'll agree with 30. 30. Guys, uh, with the season premiere, we're still bringing back all the awesome stuff that we normally do, like the freaking five final freaking thought Dizzle J's pick of the week. We're going to be doing... The pay-per-view uh, predictions and everything throughout yes. the year with the NXT, including AEW. Uh, obviously, our sponsors are back. We still got the merchandise and everything we're going to talk about throughout the show. Uh, but today, because we're doing something a little bit different with some kind of like fantasy booking stuff, we're uh, we're, we're skipping all the freaking five for this one. Yeah, no freaking five this week. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to dive into, for those of you who are Southland Championship Wrestling fans, uh, we're going to do some fantasy booking of some matches we would love to see, maybe coming up at a show. Uh, some of them may have actually happened in the past. Oh, yeah. Uh, if they did, then we would love to see them again. And then, obviously, we're going to fantasy book uh, Legends pay-per-view when it comes to, like, WWE. Because there's been a lot of talk, especially with WrestleMania coming up. Just so they have somewhere to go. Yeah. Uh, something for, like, you know, obviously, the Undertaker on the WrestleMania matches, and people are, like, all, like, hyped up on, like, wrestlers coming back. So we're going to fantasy book a legends only pay per view. Right. So we're gonna dive all into that obviously and talk about that. But before we do, I just want to remind all you guys that this episode of Just Freaking Rusty is brought to you by Audible.com. If you're just like me, you're a huge fan of audiobooks, hearing about stories, hearing about audio, Audible.com is the best place for you to go. It's a one stop shop for all audio books. And because of us, because we yes. are who we are, if you go to audibletrial.com backslash freaknet. You get a 30-day free trial of Audible. That's why a 30-day free trial to give Audible a shot. Plus, you get a credit to your first book purchase. So make sure you check out audibletrial.com backslash freaknet today and check out Audible. It's so awesome. It's, it's so even awesome. better now that it's in video. It's so awesome because it's in video. Maybe yes. maybe if I ever learn to edit video, I could put like like links and stuff into videos. Like, 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 like that. Who knows, right? <laughs> New to this. Completely fucking dumb. Uh, threw up some pop figures so you guys who uh, see that we did decorate for the occasion. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. I, I, lo- I like the pops, and, I, and then again, I don't like the pops. I know you're a big pops guy. Huge pop guy. I'm not a huge pops guy. Well, why is that, Jay? I, the playability for me. But they're in the box. Right. But see, uh, to me, I would buy two, open one. Oh, no, no. These are collectors, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I threw up out here, as we can see, we do have uh, the NWO, Scott Hall, or Razor Ramon, as he's referred the to. bad guy. The bad guy. Uh, Undertaker, uh, Sting, and AJ Styles. Uh, some of my favorites. Yeah, definitely tops. Definitely. I'm, uh, I'm waiting, uh, I'm hoping for the uh, Funko Diamond Dallas page. Ooh. Uh, haven't heard anything about it, but since he's going to debut at AEW next week, it's probably never going to happen. <laughs> so, but I want old, like, Gene wearing DDP from WCW. I don't want like Nirvana yeah, entrance music. I don't want DDP. D- I don't want DDP yoga DDP. Yeah, I don't want a fucking pop figure where he's holding his foot straight on downward the dog yeah, or something. No. That ain't me. Jay, what do you want to start out with, man? We got a lot to cover. Uh, we obviously we got shit, man. We got the results for Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW, and Impact to go over. Let's um, let's do results and then we'll go into the super fun stuff. Okay, <laughs> I mean it's all fun. It is fun. I mean, the results are kind of fun in their own little way. The results are kind of fun. Yeah, so let's go ahead and dive right into that and shit and get that done. Um, I guess we got to start with Raw. I think we always usually start with Raw, yeah. so we'll go ahead and dive into that. Uh, not actually a bad uh, show for this week. If you guys had a chance to check it out, uh, I just watched it recently. Like, because I try to like, kind of watch them all together so it's like fresh in my mind right. how everything's going on there. Uh, there's just some things I don't understand. Mm hmm. 
the whole Brock Lesnar thing. Yeah, I mean, we opened up the show seeing Brock Lesnar, which was the first time he was there and God knows how long. Yeah, forever. Yeah, and uh, and they come out, which is, it was a good promo. I mean, every promo that Paul Heyman does is good. Yeah, he doesn't have bad ones. Um, an opening segment with them is never bad. I think he threw the word bitch out there once, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he said, like, Happy New Year, some bitches or something. I don't know. It's fucking Paul Heyman. He can do what he wants. He produces the fucking show. <laughs> I'm Paul Heyman. Everything I say is gold. Exactly. So Brock Lesnar's going out there, and he's or not even Brock, kind of Paul Heyman because Brock don't speak. He don't need to. It's fucking Brock Lesnar for God's sake. Brock. <laughs> yeah. Or he does that weird, like high pitched screaming bullshit in that one video that you see oh, from like, a couple years ago. Ugh. Oh my god. Horrifying. Anyways, so Paul Heyman's talking about uh, how Brock doesn't have like any like real challenge and everything, so he's gonna enter the Royal Rumble as number one as champion. So is he putting the is he putting the title up then? I don't think so. I don't think it's up for grabs in the in the uh, Royal Rumble. I think they did that to Roman a few years back. Yeah, but well, that was a punishment. I think he's just doing it to where, like, if he wins, he doesn't have to defend the title. Oh. Uh, so, it may be interesting. It's definitely interesting to see if he does, you know, decide to put the title on, but I really don't think oh, he will. God. I mean, I think maybe they'll force him to, but... I don't, I don't like that. No, nah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see what they, uh, what they do from there. But the first match of the night was the Andrade versus Rey Mysterio for the Ooh. United States Championship match. Uh, these guys um, together is really fucking cool. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, like, even, right, because, like, and there's been rumors going on with Rey Mysterio talking about, like, you know, after WrestleMania, he may retire, call it a career. Well, I've also been hearing that he wants to start a faction, though. What, LWF or LWO or whatever the fuck something it is? Something like that, like, yeah. something like Latino L- World Latino, Order or something, yeah. something like that, but he wants to have a faction with him... Andrade and Humberto, and yeah. I don't know who else he would get, but it it'd be interesting. It would let Ray still be in the limelight without having to wrestle so much and put his body through that stuff. Or maybe you see Dominic come up finally. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to what I said last week when it came to Sheamus and our final freaking thought question. It's like, is it really necessary for him to still be there? Right. I like Ray Mysterio. Growing up watching Ray for like the last 20 years, fucking awesome. From Ray Mysterio Jr. in WCW to making his debut in WWE on SmackDown, jumping off the steel cage, uh, leaving, going to uh, Lucha Underground and stuff like that, and then coming back once again. It's cool that they're doing this. And it's yeah. awesome he had that little push for a while as United States Champion, to, uh, taking on Brock Lesnar for the title and everything. It's cool that they did that stuff. But... It all goes back to what I was saying last week. It's like, it, I mean, even though these guys should still go, right? there's enough young talent in Daddy that do, needs to Do we shot. still need them to go? Yeah. And the answer is no. Yeah. Uh, a little confused at the end of this match. I mean, obviously this match went on, uh, I think this was probably the longest match of the night, which it should be. Oh, yeah. These guys fucking go. Ray had the upper hand for most of the showing. Uh, but it was a little confused at the end. Um, Ray went to go dive off the rope, uh, landed on... Uh, from the uh, rope to the fucking apron. Andrade caught him, threw him behind him, ended up on Selena Vega. Uh, I think there was some confusion in the ring when he was going for his uh, DDT finisher, and the ref kind of, like, separated him. Yeah. Ray rolled out and, like, was checking on Selena Vega and then got back in the ring again. Andrade didn't check on her at all. Yeah, so I think, I don't know if something messed up there where, like, you know, the finish wasn't quite right or somebody in the back has said, hey, make it go five more minutes or some shit, but... Uh, Andrade, Andrade definitely picked up the victory on that. Great fucking match. Uh, it was definitely an A, uh, potentially to be the match of the night, uh, with competition to this triple threat tag team match Ooh. for the uh, Raw Tag Team titles. Uh, we had the Street Profits, uh, the OC, the greatest tag team in the world, and then, of course, you know the Viking Raiders, who I'm, are the current Raw champions. I'm becoming a bigger fan of the Street Profits the more and more I see them. Mm-hmm. When, they, when I first started, I was like, yeah. And then I watched that, the ladder match they had in NXT where they won the championships. Yeah, like, the Fatal Four Way, right? Yeah. 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 That was amazing. And then this match and a couple mm-hmm. other ones they've had has just been damn near top notch. Yeah. And I mean, the and the one dude's actually ex-military, so that makes, makes him a little more likable, too. Mm-hmm. So I see big things happening for them. I think it happened more on SmackDown for them than Raw. I think that would be a better spot for them. SmackDown, I think, but yeah, yeah, I agree. SmackDown, I think, would be a, more of an edgier kind of uh, right. viewership for them to kind of go and do more of their profit typed. Yeah. We want shit. the smoke. Yeah. 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 It's 2020 yeah. in Illinois. I guess yeah. that's hey, it's, now, right? it's legal now. Yeah. Um, 
Viking Raiders uh, retained the championship. Uh, it looked like pretty close for them to be losing it, but obviously you're tag team champions for a reason. Oh, yeah. You have a, a <laughs> idea of... <laughs> like the base motherfuckers on the block. Oh, God, yeah. I, I, I think my favorite part of the match, which wasn't wrestling, was like all the cartwheels and flips. <laughs> <laughs> that was going on. I thought that was pretty fucking funny. But that was a, all in all, it was a good match, and it was definitely a contender for a match of the night. Uh, there was a segment, Becky Lynch came out, talking about how like she refuses to be embarrassed by Asuka again. Asuka comes out, does her weird dancing she does. Like the it, hippie dance on the way down. It reminds me of Shinsuke. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, like, like babyface Shinsuke. Not so much heel anymore, but... I mean, she comes out dancing and everything. Becky just socks her in the mouth and walks away. <laughs> that was great. Funniest fucking thing ever. Uh, I mean, I, I think this was probably one of Raw's better uh, shows. Showings. And it sucks because I don't think people are realizing how good this show was because the viewership is so down from, like, the past couple of weeks. Right. Well, that wedding, that wedding fucked a lot. Yeah. Uh, Eric Rowan took on a local competitor again. No big fucking surprise. There was a segment in the back with EC3, or not EC3, uh, Mojo Rowley. Mojo. Was asking, you know, Rowan's like, hey, let me look in the cage. And he did. Freaked out, called him a sick freak, and fucking ran off. It makes me think that they're really gonna, they're they're really overshooting what this could yeah. be. Yeah, it's not so much a uh, because I mean, like, if anything was normal in there, he wouldn't have made that reaction. Like, even was like a pot. I think I heard possum or vulture. Shit yeah, like didn't, that. didn't it spray some red red stuff in someone's face? The competitor, yeah. yeah. So so um. He grabbed the competitor, and, you know, yelled at him, like, you want to see what's in the cage? And the competitor's like, no, like, the competitor didn't even go near the fucking cage. Well, Rowan lifted up the uh, fucking uh, burlap yeah. cover, shoved his face in there, and it was covered in red. So I can only assume it's an alternate universe Asuka underneath there. <laughs> A mini Asuka. <clears throat> but Asuka, Rowan uh, picked up the win, uh, the win in that. Uh, AJ Styles versus uh, Kira Tozawa. This match didn't last that long. Really? No. Nah. It, it wasn't it wasn't a long drawn out match, and the fact that AJ won with an RKO was fucking phenomenal. Pun intended too. <laughs> fucking pun intended. I don't think I watched this match. Yeah. Obviously, if if you if if you saw the entrances coming and you grab, went up, if you stood up, went to the bathroom, grabbed a drink or something like that, came yeah. back, the fucking was match over. was over. It was a it was a pretty quick fucking match. Uh, st- I mean, obviously, still good. You know, they each one did a little bit of something, right. but I think it was more to put AJ over going into. I believe he's facing uh, Randy Orton. It's either next week or two weeks on Raw. I want to say it's next week. Probably get a, try to get it in before the Rumble. Yeah, I would imagine anyway. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, Bobby Lashley and Lana finally uh, seal you know their commitment to each oh, other Jesus. through marriage. They finally get that. Did you hear that the? Uh, that the officiant got tackled by security because they didn't know that he was coming out. I did. I, I saw that. That's awesome. That that's like one of those things like where they didn't tell Michael Cole that this pirate was gonna happen. Yeah, uh, that was pretty cool. Um, this it was very anticlimactic. Rusev showed up saying he's on the beach out somewhere vacationing. Obviously, you could tell it's not even a green screen. It's a fucking backdrop because <laughs> the waves aren't fucking moving and the wind's not fucking blowing. <laughs> I mean, it looks like he's at fucking Sears doing family photos. Uh, but he put together, he said he put together an album for their wedding, and it was just pictures from their fucking wedding. You know, Getting people destroyed. coming out. Yeah, so, uh, very anticlimactic. Obviously, there's going to be a, ta- uh, a singles match next week between the two. He says the Bulgarian Brute's coming back, and he's going to destroy fucking Bobby Lashley. Lana's going to be in his cl- uh, corner, which Lashley finally, for the first time ever, told Lana to shut up. Really? So that was pretty cool that he finally did that, so I think that's going to kind of tear an issue or build an issue between them, potentially probably tearing them apart. Uh, there was a promo in the back where uh, I believe it's Carly Caruso, the back yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was talking to our truth <laughs> You know, talking with him and everything. Liv Morgan interrupts. Says, well, I guess uh, Russo's going to need someone in his corner. That's something I could live for. Oh, jeez. Yeah, goofy, but whatever. Sarah Logan insulted uh, Charlotte Flair, attacked really? her, picked up the victim. I mean, obviously she lost against Charlotte, but she attacked her from behind and everything. Now, because of this, there's a lot of skepticism on her going on social media saying, I'm not wrestling anymore. I don't think it's what people intend it to be. I think a lot of people think she's quitting wrestling, but I think she's not wrestling so much as she is now fighting. Uh, so that's how, I, that's how I'm playing out. Because I don't think someone's going to go on social media and say, like, I'm done wrestling. It's like, eh, you're not. 
<laughs> Your contract is not up yet. Yeah, look at Ric Flair. Well, you can't even talk about contracts. Look at fucking uh, fucking Mike uh, Canales. Oh. Right? Yeah. He's contracted for like three to five years. He's just sitting at home, chilling. Getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drew McIntyre took on No Way Jose in a singles match. Uh, started out, Drew just beat the shit out of uh, the uh, No Way Jose party group or whatever. I don't, I don't know why they keep trying to reinvent that party line. I don't think it's ever worked for anybody who's ever had it. Yeah. I don't know. Obviously, Drew picked up the win. Uh, again, good matches. Drew fucking McIntyre. Aster Black took on Shelton Benjamin. Ooh. Really nice match. It's glad to see that Shelton's still out there doing his thing. I mean, obviously, I think he's more of enhancement. I think yeah. now more than anything. Obviously, uh, Black picked up the uh, victory in it. Buddy Murphy attacked him after the match. I believe they're going to face each other again next week. The, the, they're going to put together some of the best matches we've seen. Yeah. And they already have. Yeah, but Murphy needs to win one. Yeah. See, he needs to. It needs, it needs to go a little back and forth. Yeah. Uh, wrapping up the show, probably the biggest surprise of the night. We had AOP and Seth Rollins taking on Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and returning after two years to Big Show. That's pretty neat. How did yeah. Big Show look? He looked good. I, I think, maybe from my perspective, he looked like he packed on a little yeah. since he lo- dropped all the weight. But it's probably just a fluctuating thing, obviously wintertime. Um, but he doesn't look like as big as he used to. I know he had both hips replaced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- this is the first match in like two years. He, great fucking job, great fucking showing. Um, uh, big Show Owens and Small Joe won via disqualification, um, but they obviously, you know, ended with them. He, right. Big Show knocked out uh, Seth Rollins with the uh, weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> but it's cool to see him come back for a little bit. I don't know how long that's gonna last for. I personally believe that it's just. Showing he's still there and giving him a little bit of relevancy for right. a little bit until he gets inducted into the Hall of Fame potentially this year. Which actually we got to do that at the freaking five soon because they're gonna start announcing more. They've already more. started announcing yeah, more. Yeah, I got two of them. So the we Bellas. Gotta, yeah, we gotta get our freaking five. And what? They, I think they announced the Bellas, didn't they? No. Uh, pretty sure. Did they? That's upsetting. That is upsetting. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> I mean, yes, it could go in eventually, but come on now. No. It's, it's, I, well, no, they've, they've been out of the ring for at least a year. Who cares? Not long enough. I mean, not Kurt, long enough. Kurt Angle and Ric Flair were still wrestling when they went in, so. I think, I think Angle officially retired before he went in. Ric Flair is the only active superstar to ever get inducted into all of it. That's true. Yeah, but still, it's the fucking Bellas. <laughs> they didn't have to go on right away. You knew they were going to. They're super popular. Yeah, they're they got go- the TV yeah. shows. Yeah, but I mean, over everyone else who hasn't gone in yet, fucking Molly Holly, Jacqueline. Do you not remember who Molly Holly is? No, they're already in. Molly Holly's not in, is she? I'm pretty sure she's Molly in. Molly Holly in? And I'm, I'm pretty sure Jacqueline's in, too. Oh my god, who the fuck am I thinking? Not Jacqueline. Who the hell am I thinking of? She's from ECW. She was with that. Um, that oh god, what the fuck is that? My high might be. I might be mixing it. I think I got her confused uh, with somebody else. But who was the uh, girl? Not Jacqueline. The other girl. Oh. She was in ECW. I know who you're talking about. I cannot place right. the name. I'm gonna think of it because I know she was with that one guy who was being uh, managed by Teddy Long. I want to say his name was like Rodney Mac. That's not even. Name escaped me. Jacqueline, I do believe, is in, but there's somebody I'm thinking of, not Jacqueline. Okay. But there's still other people that need to go in. Woman. Yeah, fucking woman. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking woman. There we go. (laughs) Miss Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth needs to go in. She needs to go in. Fuck yeah. But she's been blackballed. Yeah. Stacey Keebler, I think, could go in. Keebler, Undertaker's wife. Michelle McCool. Michelle McCool. Yeah. Trying to think of anybody else. I really can't. I wish I could remember who the fuck that girl was. Natalia would be there one day, but... Who? Natalia. Why am I... Oh, Natalie. Yeah. Natty. Natty. Yeah, Natalia, okay. I haven't heard Natalia in a while. <laughs> I, I hear Natty a lot. Oh, it's Total Divas, bro. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Total Divas, It's like Total Divas. She's not, <laughs> she's not on TV that much anymore. Um, I'm going to think... I know I'm going to fucking remember that girl's name. I'm probably going to look it up here in a minute, though, but... No, I mean, like... Cool to the fucking Bellas, but... Right. There, there's more people that deserve it. Yeah. 
And at least like a big show, where you're like you know, bam, bam. God, Vader. Vader. I think I think a couple of these guys went in under the radar. Because they, they do like a. Oh, like that Legends. Yeah. I know neither one of them were in that. I don't think so. I forget who was. Bruiser Brody, I know, went to Bruiser Legends, Brody, yeah. but I don't think he was like officially inducted. Which I don't. I'm not a big fan of that. Because Abdul the Butcher was inducted into the Hall of Fame, but Bruiser Brody was only part of the Legends class. I'm not a big fan. Yeah, that, of that. no, I'm not a fan of that. And why? Because he was stabbed death, or because yeah. uh, because Primo Cologne's fucking uh, father's partner fucking did it. <laughs> Speculation. All speculation. I'll say it. I don't care. <laughs> Come at me, Puerto Rico. Come at me. <laughs> After the earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, want to do AEW or want to do NXT? I'll do AEW. All right. Go ahead. You got it up there? Yeah. Okay. Da, 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 da. No, it's all fucking up. Oh. You fucked up. You fucked up. You so, fucked up. Tell me something else I don't. Should have never let you go. All right, there you go. It's loading. Ooh, this is so. Whoa. It's classy. Classy. Look at this. Okay. Actually, if I think, if I do this, learning on the job. Well, hot damn. There you go. So AEW, the big question tonight is, will Moxley join the inner circle? Yeah. So there's a question hanging over Moxley's head. Dark cloud. Blah blah blah. Jazz. 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 Yep. So we start. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I was going to figure it out. Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page and Private Party. Yeah. Yeah. I, Private Party is like, I guess, their version of Street Profits or vice mm-hmm. versa, whatever the case may be. Crime time? Yeah. Omega and Page defeated the Private Party. They got a grade A. Uh, red Hot mm-hmm. Opener. It, it just, I guess there was some. Uh, dissension between Paige and Omega, but we've had a talk about that, where Paige is wanting to pull himself away from the elite. Yeah, I read about that. Yeah, and like, so. and he's at, because there's obviously been a lot of speculation about him not being like over as much. Right. Like, he actually, I think he was in an interview, he says that he's kind of okay with that right now. Because his whole goal was making AEW huge with right. the talent that they accumulated. So, I guess it's cool to take a back scene and everything, but I think he's getting to that point in his career where it's on the back end of it. So you don't want to, like, sit around too much? Yeah, it's like, I, let me do something. Yeah. It's almost like Randy Orton. Yeah. Like, Randy Orton's still relevant. He's just not main event relevant Super at relevant. the time yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, we have the AEW Women's Championship match. Chris Strat- Statlander versus Rio. I don't think I've seen Statlander before. If I have, it's been a... Uh, quick and I didn't know who it was yeah well that's cool that's the cool thing when it comes to a new company like AEW it seems like every show is always somebody new right and the thing is like they I think they limited their roster because I don't think they're really signing anyone else unless they're like fucking huge like yeah like scroll or um well scroll went to uh, NWA yeah who's the um like uh who's the guy that left impact that's between uh, oh Killer Cross yeah stuff like I think they're I think they'll leave the door open for people like that, but I think they still limit it to like they don't want to overfill their roster with con- because like their contracts are kind of more like like you're getting paid regardless kind of like right I think they got contracts. like a TV contract yeah so it's like you know why pay for people you're not going to use and I think that's kind of a smart way for them to do as they are right now because as far as I know they're not doing house shows they're just doing the dynamites yeah. and their pay per views. Yep. So, uh, Rio defeated Stratlander. The match got a C. I, you know, I think, to me, when you talk about the women's revolution, it really started an impact wrestling for me. Mm-hmm. And that's who brought it up. And that's yeah. where WWE had to catch up to. That's where AEW is going to have to catch Them up to. fucking knockouts. Oh, God. Them TNA knockouts. The ODB, the beautiful people, fucking... Rose Gail Mary. Kim's not Gail even in the Hall of Fame yet. No. Gail Kim needs to be put in. Well, she's in the TNA Hall of Fame. That's a big deal. Yeah. Being in the TNA Hall of Fame is like being in the JFW Hall of Fame. It's cool. Don't get us wrong, <laughs> but it's not WWE. Yeah. Uh, Christopher... But ours will be better. <laughs> yeah. Our, ours, when we induct somebody in, I, I hope that they don't say, I don't want it, like Kurt right. Angle did. Like, I appreciate it, but 
No, not right now. <laughs> but Tony Schiavone, I don't want it. Yeah, fuck him. Like, <laughs> just screw that. I don't care if somebody literally went on Raw and badmouthed me, a complete fucking nobody. Yeah. And they're like, hey, we want you to come work for us. Like, I'm fucking there. Yeah, right? I actually Googled because because I'm job hunting and shit right now. Just for help, I typed in WWE. There's They're some hiring. jobs available. Yeah. yeah. There's a warehouse associate job. I'm like, really? Yeah, I'm like, I can forklift some shit. <laughs> so you see, uh, you got to move a big show from here to here. Right. The writer's assistant. I'm like, I got some ideas. <laughs> Trust us. We'll help you. Yeah. Listen to my fantasy book and see how many of those matches fucking happen <laughs> next year. All Saudi Arabia shit. So you go in there and you realize JMW is on their podcast list. I'm like, ah. Uh. There's some podcast jobs. There's like an executive producer podcast job available. Because they're like doing these whole new studio like really? building and everything. So there's a lot of podcast jobs available. Not hosting, but... We can get a foot in. Yeah. <laughs> Just let me host the show. <laughs> I mean, look at the production we're doing right now. Right? I mean, look at this. Look this at these. Is, this is Mama T Production Studio. Fuck yeah. So next up, we had Christopher <laughs> Daniels versus... Sammy Guava. I, I don't know, know how to pronounce his name right, but I do love watching him in the ring. He is mm-hmm. a definite up-and-comer with somebody to watch for. Uh, yeah. And he actually picked the win over Daniels. But I guess there's some outside interference because mm-hmm. oh, yeah, he is be. part of the inner circle. Da, 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 da. Cody and Dustin versus the Lucha Bros. So the Rose Bros... The Rhodes Bros. The Rose, Rose Bros. Bros. The Rose Bros. the Lucha Bros. Bros. And Dustin, to me, man, I, I think he's in the best shape of his life. Yeah. It's DDP Yoga, man. Yeah. So, uh, the Brotherhood defeated the Lucha Bros. Uh, the match got an A. Anderson is now Cody's manager. Arn. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I, 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 fucking Arn Anderson. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <coughs> so you got because Tully Blanchard is he part of uh, he's he's with he's with Tessa and Impact right Sean Spears he's with Sean Spears yeah. oh so he's also at AEW yeah okay so then I guess uh, will Cody accept, accept MJF stipulations and the stipulations are Cody cannot touch MJF until re- revelation revolution 10 lashes on TV and a cage match with Wardlow, which I think is MJF's bodyguard at the moment. He wants him to be whipped on television? I guess so. That's why I don't watch AEW. <laughs> uh, the Best Friends versus Jurassic Express. Hmm. I enjoy The Best Friends and The Jurassic Express. I watched a, like a, the building of Orange Cassidy from when he first started in wrestling yeah. to what he is now. That was pretty good. Uh, the Jurassic Express defeated the best friends in Cassie. Got a B-plus rating. Da, da, da. Oh, and here we go with the big question. Will Moxley accept Jericho's offer? And <laughs> the answer would be he blasted Jericho with a bottle of the bubble. God, and yes. then dropped him with the Paragon ship before taking off through the crowd. guess that's a no. It could, it could be a maybe. It could be a maybe. Maybe. This is Moxley. It's fucking Moxley, bro. Maybe he just wanted to see if Jericho could take the hit. Oh, I mean, it, it's it's a good, yeah, it, it's to kind of like weigh it out, like how much can he really handle? Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. That's good. I mean, I think I think Mox, I, I, you know, inviting Moxley to join a group makes no fucking sense. No. Yeah. I think we talked about that last week. Yeah, he's definitely kind of a loner kind of guy. All right, let's dive into NXT, get those results uh, here and done, out of the way. Um, I guess before we dive into that, I guess we could plug some more shit real quick, right? You mean like the shirt you're wearing? Like, like this shirt? Like this shirt right like here? Freaking? Freaking is my second favorite F word? Tpublic.com. I'm talking about this at tpublic.com. Yeah. Right, all you do is uh, go to tpublic.com, search JFW. And then you have all kinds of swag. There's so many logos, too. Hoodies. Fucking hoodies, t-shirts. T-shirts, onesies. Yeah. Oh my God, the tank tops. Tank tops. Fucking tank tops. Cell phone Stickers. cases. God, laptop cases, man. Wall art. Pins and tapestry. Magnets. God, so much. All at tpublic.com. T-P-U-B-L-I-C 
facebook.com slash jfw uh, in a couple weeks there is a sale going on i'll keep you guys updated on that but the sale uh, the, the sale of our merchandise is always right. happening so keep in touch i think in a couple weeks uh we're gonna have a 30 percent off uh sale uh, over the new weekend so we'll keep you guys updated on that make sure you grab your merchandise uh the new logo Came the new out. logo. The new JFW logo uh, did come out, but obviously the old vintage logo is still there if you guys wanted to check that out as well. But again, my favorite shirt, freaking, is my second favorite F word. I love it. So. And their quality. God, it's come, it's, this is fucking breathable. Yeah. I, we, I love them. Because we are here at Freaknet Studios. Yeah. It's, and, it's uh, warm in here. Yeah, it's fucking warm. So, well, it's progress. Get off my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, NXT obviously opened up. Rhea Ripley coming out, new NXT Women's Champion, coming off her victory from uh, Baszler. Uh, talking about what's next for the future. Tony Storm came out, former NXT UK Champion. Wanted to challenge Rhea. And I got to say, like, I have never heard so much shit about a female wrestler's ass that I had <laughs> about Tony Storm in the last, like, week. Yeah. Oh, no, she got like holy shit! She got fat ass. Right? You thirsty motherfuckers! But um, it was cool. Like you know, obviously she came out. Uh, Io Shirai came out. Yeah. Uh, Candice. Uh, De- Candice Lorray. Lorray. Yeah. Um, what the fuck is the NXT UK? It's just like is it Kaylee Ray? Kaylee it's Ray. Kyle, yeah. Kylie Ray. Kay- whatever. Kylie. I don't know. Yeah. And then obviously Bianca Belair all came out. It ended up turning into a six woman uh, tag team match. Uh, obviously, Rhea Ripley picked up the victory in it. Um, little issues between Shirai and Belair in the match that caused the ending to side with uh, Larray, Storm, and I, I mean, Ripley. Ripley is just going to... I think she's going to tear apart NXT for a while. Yeah. First round, uh, Dusty Road Classic. The tag Ooh. team tournament for NXT. The, the One of the best tournaments that WWE has came out with in a long time. Uh, we got Imperium... Taking on the Forgotten Sons in the beginning. Appearing picked up the victory. Obviously, huge fucking power team. And it's yeah. cool because when it comes to Imperium, they don't need the other guys out there to kind of help them. No, not at all. Um, and you'll see what I mean when I talk about the next uh, <laughs> Dusty <laughs> Rhodes match. Austin Theory took on uh, Joaquin Wild. That was a cool match. That was a great match. That's what I love about NXT. Yeah. Every fucking match is a good match. Because they still wrestle like they're independent. And Joaquin Wild, if you don't know, was DJ Z in Impact Wrestling. No shit. He actually broke his neck. He was out for a long time. Hmm. Oh shit, I think I do remember. It was like a top rope thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen that. Uh, second round, uh, second match of the first round for the Undis- uh, Dusty Rhodes Classic Undisputed Era took on Gallius. Uh, Undisputed Era picked up the victory. Obviously, there was some help. From uh, the outside, from the SPD, yeah. which is fine. A win's a win. A win's a win. No matter how you pick up the fucking win. Adam Cole, baby. God, Adam fucking Cole. Surprising, though, um, they only got a C, uh, C plus rating on that match. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, Gargano had a promo talking about uh, Finn Balor walking out on NXT when he got the call to the main roster. Okay. Just like all of them have. Everyone. Except Gargano. He said it. Yeah. I got to call. I didn't go. Well, it's kind of bullshit because he did go. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you're up there for a minute, guy. Yeah. I mean, the only reason you came back is because Tommaso Ciampa got injured and had to vacate the title and they needed to put the title on somebody. So, he's up. He's up, Johnny Wrestling. <laughs> Johnny Impact. <laughs> uh, Mia Yim took on Caden Carter. Another good match. Yim picked up the victory. Huge fan of Mia Yim. I'm glad that she's still in, like, the loop of, uh, like, still yeah. involved in everything. She was trained by Gail Kim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, she was part of Impact for a bit. I'm, I'm, I think it also brings honor. Almost, I want to say she's her little sister, but I'm not 100 no. percent sure of it. Why? Because Yim. Oh. Yim and Kim. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly what it is. <sighs> no, they're not related. No. No, they're not related. Okay. Uh, Fatal Four Way Match: uh, Keith Lee took on Dominic Dakojevich, Damian Priest, and Cameron Grimes. Winner to face the North American Champion, Roderick Strong, in two weeks at NXT. That was cool. Keith Lee picked up the fucking victory, and he deserved it. Oh, definitely breakout star of the year. Breakout star of the year. Fucking obviously, it was a great fucking match. Uh, um, I would like to uh, seen like 
I would rather have a shock factor and maybe have Cameron Grimes win. Yeah. Like, I would love to see Keith Lee become North American champion or even face the North American champion. Probably closer to WrestleMania. So I wouldn't mind, like, a shock factor if they have Cameron Grimes winning and then him facing, like, Roger Sean now. He could lose. That's fine. I, yeah, I guess it would make it a little more yeah. exciting. So, um, and then obviously also that was uh, shown on uh, NXT. Uh, we talked about before the show, uh, Robbie E. came back. Robert Stone. Robert Stone. Robert fucking Stone. And his ankle socks and Converse shoes and tight pants and fucking garbage. At least he didn't have that hair. Thank God. I was done with it. Well, Jersey Shore's over, bro. The guile haircut from Street Fighter? Yeah. From Street Fighter. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of every time I saw him. Where's yeah. the sonic boom, dude? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I'm not going to go over the SmackDown results and everything. I do want to dive into all the other stuff. Plus, SmackDown just happened last week, so I'm not too worried about it. Last night? Yeah, I mean it was. I mean it was an okay show, and I think the biggest part of it all is we are gonna know that uh, John Morrison is going to debut next week against Big E, so he's gonna have his first uh, match. So, and then obviously Bobby Roode came back. Oh really? Yep, he made his return uh, from injury. So. (laughs) (laughs) You say injury? Fucking injury. Um, no, well, but I mean we could do. We'll we'll follow up with NXT or uh, SmackDown next week and everything. I got I, I got. The big stuff out of the way. Um, but I really want to dive into the other stuff we're doing. Hell yeah. Um, all right, so give me a decision. You want to do our fantasy booking for Legends pay-per-view or fantasy booking for Southland Championship Wrestling? Let's do SCW. Want to do SCW? Awesome. Guys, if you're from the local area and um, the Kankakee area and stuff like that and you uh, go to Southland Championship Wrestling, if you guys are fans of Southland Championship Wrestling, first off, thank you for uh, supporting the podcast and... Uh, watching us on a weekly basis. Secondly, uh, screw Sentinel for not giving us the Fan of the Year award because we still deserve that. <laughs> so I'm still waiting for that recount. We still have been to more shows than the Sentinel. Brock Lesnar has wrestled more times this past year than Sentinel has been at shows. True. Fucking true. All right. Uh, SCW New Beginnings is um, January 25th. 5th. Holy shit. January 25th, Shaban Civic Center. Tickets are on sale right now for pre-sale, guys. So if you want to buy your tickets for just ten dollars, you can buy them at uh, Fit Body U, Genesis Martial Arts. Twelve dollars. Are they still twelve dollars? Yep. Even pre-sale? Yep. That's what the flyer says. Okay. Well, I saw something somewhere that uh, one of the wrestlers posted up saying the tickets pre-sale were ten bucks. Uh, on the flyer it says twelve. Go find out. <laughs> Either way, it's worth the money to go see. Yeah. Family friendly, always a charity, just a good bunch of dudes to be around. Yeah, uh, Shaban Civic Center, if you guys have been to a wrestling show, you know what Shaban Civic Center is. If not, fucking Google it. I don't have to give you directions. I'm not MapQuest. Uh, door opens at 6, bell times at 7. Check out uh, current champions, uh, SCW champion, Max Holiday, Genesis champion, The Sheik, tag team champions, uh, Elite Pain in Elite some Pain. kind of aspect after we heard what happened last month. Well. And uh, new women's champion, Pluma Star. Congratulations, Plum. Um, don't have a match card yet. Not sure what's going to happen. We should have that next week for us to uh, give the results out for you guys. Um, but usually every SCW show, usually every championship is on the line. Unless you're a Hunter Payne, you don't have to uh, defend your uh, SCW Heavyweight Championship every month. Ooh. As the uh, 30-day uh, clause states that you're supposed to when you're fucking Max Holiday with a broken fucking foot. But, hey, <laughs> why not have Hunter have the night off? That's cool. Um, anyways. <laughs> do you um, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I go first. Okay. I think I usually make you go first. But I'll go That's first. Doesn't matter. So, uh, as we mentioned, we are going to fantasy book an SCW show. Maybe Sentinel will fucking learn something. Maybe uh, take what we say with uh, who knows? Maybe we are predicting what the next match card is. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just our personal fantasy booking and stuff like that, but. I don't know what you went with yours, but I stuck to consistent uh, SCW guys. But one, te- uh, one team in a tag team match had never been to SCW that we have seen in the Indies. I would love to see yes. at SCW. Yes. So uh, yeah, go ahead. Let's let's hear your let's hear your match card. So I'm, I'm gonna start from the bottom up. So like first match tonight, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. so I would I did Malibu's Most Wanted versus the Family for number one contendership for no, tag team. No, who in the family? Ivan and Jake. Ivan and Jake. Okay. 
Well, Ivan and uh, Dog Boy. Rancid? Yeah. Gotcha. Pet? Yeah, the pet. Yeah, the pet. Uh, Paloma versus Natasha for the women's. Okay. I got JPH versus Sheik versus Andrews for the Genesis title. Okay. And then the Sharpshooters versus Elite Pain, which I think that has happened before, but I don't think the Sharpshooters were quite up to par as they are now. Mm-hmm. And then I have Max Holiday versus Angus for the SCW Championship. Nice, nice. Um, l- yeah, a little bit similar. Uh, so, singles match, uh, we got Mark Anthony taking on Maverick Cage, uh, four, uh, two members. It's because it hasn't been decided if he's not yet or not. Right. But currently still two members of Elite Payne taking each other on from the situation that happened last week where Mark Anthony attacked uh, Maverick Cage. Uh, thank God. But the fucking president was out there to help out his uh, fucking, you know, wrestlers. His, his what, two-time champion? Yeah, yeah. Thank God he was out there to be a team player. So, oh, yeah. Um, oh, also, fuck yeah for Hunter being a fucking hero too, right? Well, uh, I, I mean, we discussed this. I, I really think this has a lot to do with what happened at the, the DWA, DWA show? show. Oh, so he's, just, so he's just being fucking bitter? Meh. No. No, still. Talk shit, get your wig split, you know? No, I don't know. I have no idea what the fuck that means. <laughs> no clue. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, and you're right. I mean, there could be a conspiracy going around. It is sent on Hunter Payne, after all. So, uh, singles match, I would have JPH taking on Jake Andrews. Two rising stars. Probably Ooh. the future of Southland Championship Wrestling. Oh, definitely. Uh, just a singles match between the two. It could be number one contendership for a Genesis Championship. I mean, both guys are, I do believe, are ready to take on an SCW title run. But I'm a big believer in holding the mid-card title before you hold the main event title. Like they used to do back in, like, you know, Air Continental, DDF title era. Uh, I'm going to have a fatal four-way for the vacant SCW Tag Team Champions. This is if they do strip the title away from Elite Payne. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have the modern-day Gunslingers. Uh, obviously, we got uh, James Creed, Max Blaylock. Uh, they're going to take on uh, Bulletproof LLC. Ooh. Uh, any, any pairing of the, of the four. So the free bird, free bird roll. Yeah. Uh, Malibu's Most Wanted. And a tag team that I've been trying to say that SCW needs to bring in, Super Beard Brothers. Oh, the Super the Beard Brothers. The fucking Super Beard Brothers, man. Oh, man. We used to watch them in Powerhouse all the fucking time. Uh, we, we, we had conversations with them. We discussed beards. Yeah. Cool fucking guys. At that time, they gave me a D. I did. I'm probably a good C right now. Yeah. I think, I think after the show, they did give you the D. Yeah. All right, that's a dick joke. Super Dead Brothers. That's a, such a dick joke. Super Beard Brothers need to be in Southland Championship Wrestling. Sentinel, if you're listening to me, Super Beard Brothers, SCW 2020. He's got to be listening. He has to listen. He has to listen because he's so fucking bored with his life. He needs to fucking troll something. Like, oh, God, okay, Travis T said that. Let me let me get back at him. Bushwhackers, greatest tag team. <laughs> um, <laughs> SCW Women's Championship. Uh, I'm going to put uh, Natasha Crane to take on Paloma Star. Uh, I had uh, Casey Dillon in this, but I read something on uh, social media about how she's going to be stepping away from the ring for a little so, bit. Due so to good injury. luck to her. Yeah, we wish you all the best. Jesus. Um. I, I, I hate the fact that we missed her winning it, and yeah. I hate the fact we missed her losing it. Uh, I probably could put Kamikaze in here, but why? Uh, what's up? I, I guess... You can laugh all you want, but she also wasn't <laughs> yeah. on your card. Yeah, no, she wasn't on my card either. <laughs> Genesis Championship, I went with Ingus McDuff taking on the Sheik. Uh, I know they're both part of the uh, Unholy Alliance, but why the hell not? Right. You know, everyone can have friendly competitions and shit like that. And then, of course, to round it off, we're going to have the SCW Heavyweight Championship with Hunter Payne taking on Max Holiday, taking on Ivan Manson. Ooh. Yeah. That's a big boy match right there. At first, I wanted to do just like a a Hunter versus Max Holiday in a last man standing match. And I was like, what if there was a triple threat last man standing match? And I was like, "Ah, I'll just do a normal triple threat. Triple threat, last standing match. Hmm? Right. Triple threat, last man standing. Hmm. Right. That sounds interesting as fuck. <laughs> right. Right. You're that Sentinel? Interesting as fuck. 
Book it. Book Triple it. Triple threat, last man standing match, SCW Championship. Um, but I, I know the biggest thing we could agree on is JPH and Jake Andrews. Oh, and definitely. how they... I mean, I guess we could throw the modern-day gunslingers in there, too. Young guys. I think they're still in their early 20s. So, they got some years to go and everything to kind of, like, build up. And I think they're... I mean, I, I'm trying to remember. I know I talked to... Uh, I, I talked to Creed uh, a little bit. Uh, they're... I mean, them tagging, is, I think, is, like, probably a year in. Right. So, uh, they still got ways to go. They are the current uh, ARW Tag Team Champions. So, they do have that title reign going for them now, starting from last month. Why not be a uh, fucking modern-day two-belts or whatever the fuck they want to call themselves? <laughs> as long as he keeps hitting that fucking awesome elbow. That fucking elbow drop? That elbow is Holy nice. Holy shit, that fucking elbow drop. Uh, that, both those dudes are... That's a finisher elbow drop. Yeah. That's like a... That, I mean, that's like a fucking, like, Randy Macho Man Savage fucking ending elbow drop. Oh, yeah. Right? He just needs to fucking point up. Yeah. To make it more badass, but you got you got to point up to get the power. Yeah. Oh, I love I love for him to do a springboard elbow drop. Ooh. Right. Fucking springboard elbow drop. Or when uh when fucking uh Max uh does that like uh that bridging um and holds the neck yeah. for Creed coming for the dropping, fucking set that up for a fucking elbow drop. Ooh. Right. Ooh. God. Shot in the heart. You're too blame. You're to blame. That's right. I finished that, but I don't want to be monetized because of Bon Jovi. <laughs> <laughs> Demonetized. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> first oh. day, first, first, first episode. Video. First video. Let's get a let's get an email from fucking YouTube, <laughs> which we love. <laughs> All right. Um, Let's dive into the uh, Legend pay-per-view and get that all wrapped up, too. But before we do, I just want to remind all you guys, uh, we do appreciate you watching the podcast. I mentioned it earlier. Oh, everything, yeah. list, Watching this video, listening to the podcast and everything. Uh, you're a huge supporter of the podcast. I know there's a lot of people out there like, damn, I wish I could help out the podcast more. Right. What can I do to help these guys right. succeed? Right. What is out there to help these guys make the podcast even more? What can I possibly do? What is there out on the internet that I could go to to sign up for a monthly subscription for the podcast? Patreon. Is it Patreon? Patreon. It's fucking Patreon.com. 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 Guys, if you haven't heard, which you had to because I fucking mention it every week, <laughs> Patreon.com backslash JFW Podcast is a... Uh, is a tier system that is set up for you guys to help us out as a podcast. Obviously, this stuff does cost money to do. That's why it right. took us almost two years just to do video podcasting to get the right equipment. Um, that could have happened a lot earlier if uh, we uh, thought of Patreon sooner. Yes, definitely. But because of the awesome uh, patrons we do have, like uh, Brandy, like Becca, you know, shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for being uh, patrons of ours. Um, guys, you can sign up too and be just like them just by going to patreon.com backslash JFW podcast. We have several different tiers ranking from a dollar all the way down to 15. And each tier has a different reward and prize and everything that comes with it. Like shout outs on the show, shout outs on our social media. Uh, we create you uh, match cards as our wrestlers create you a wrestling character gimmick. Uh, we have a tier that makes you for one show out of the year. Uh, the GM of the show. You get to create. You get to pick our final control. freaking, our final freaking thought, our freaking five. You get to pick Dizzle J's match of the week. Basically, you get to do all the work for us. Yeah. Right. Isn't that nice. I mean, you get the. It's make a gift. The show your own. Yeah, it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a fucking gift. Uh, on top of that, we do have other uh, podcast uh, recordings that are released strictly to just Patreon. Like to watch along to the Dirty pay per views, yes. uh, Dirty Network pay per views, uh, as well as uh, some behind the scene, um, behind the mat kind of. Uh, the darker side. Yeah, the dark side of wrestling uh, pay per views, where we talk about some tragedy storylines and stuff like that. All that is exclusive just to Patreon. So if you haven't had a chance yet, check out patreon.com slash JFW podcast. Uh, all the links to all our stuff will be put in the uh, show notes uh, below. Right here. Yeah. 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 Just just check the description. Um, 
But no, check out Patreon. That, Patreon.com backslash JJ Podcast today. Be part of the uh, Patreon. Help us out. Don't we look poor? Am I supposed to answer this question? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah, we're broke. Never mind my... But yeah, he's wearing a DC sweatshirt. That's how <laughs> broke ass he is. <laughs> because Disney is expensive. Couldn't afford my Marvel. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do the Legends uh, pay-per-view. The WWE Legends pay-per-view. We mentioned last week we are going to create a pay-per-view, a match card, strictly for those wrestlers that we don't need to come back, we don't have to watch wrestle again, but a, a select pay-per-view for them to rot- wrestle in 2020. Yeah. Um, now we're supposed to pick the match card, we're also supposed to name it. Did you name it? Yes. Excellent. Um, so since I went first last time, you go ahead and go first this time. First off, the name is Ring Veterans. Nice. I got Beth Phoenix versus Gail Kim. Okay. The Outsiders versus the X. I don't know if you've seen uh, Nash lately, but he got both hips replaced. Got it before picture creeped me out. Yeah, that was creepy, wasn't it? God. Uh, Jerry Lynn versus RVD. Okay. Uh, Hulk versus Flair. Because okay. one of them's going to die in a ring. Yeah. <laughs> And then I got Sting versus Taker versus Abyss. Okay. That's my main event. Gotcha. Nice. It's a good card. For the Legends title. It's good. Cool. Let me, uh, let me tell you why mine's better. <laughs> so this is Data E Last Ride. Ooh. I was going to go for uh, one for the road. I'm like, fuck it. The Rock got smacked down. The Undertaker got the last ride. There you go. Data E Last Ride. Uh, we got the Rockers taking on the Midnight Express. That's right, Michael's and Gennetti <laughs> taking on the fucking Midnight Express. <laughs> Only tag team match. That's all I need. Uh, Terry Funk versus Cactus Jack. Holy shit. Right? Shit's not Chainsaw Charlie. <laughs> no, it's got to be Terry Funk. It's got to be ECW heavyweight champion Terry fucking Funk. Uh, Kane versus Abyss. Ooh. Yeah, Edge versus John Cena. Everyone okay. wants to see it. Yeah. But Thugonomics John Cena. I don't want that bullshit fucking, like, you know. Fruity Pebbles? Yeah. I want thugonomics. I want the FU, not the attitude adjustment. Yeah. Uh, DDP versus Booker T. Get some uh, get some classic uh, WCW. I was, I, I was always shocked that Booker T never came back and had that, like, return match. Now, I know he did a Royal Rumble or two. What, now? Yeah. I heard there was rumor that Harlem Heat was going to face somebody. The Revival. Was it The Revival? Yeah. I'll see it. I'll watch it. I don't care. That'd be awesome. Uh, Sting versus The Undertaker. And then main event, Rock versus Steve Austin. Ooh. Stone Cold versus The Rock. Both guys in great shape. Always had great matches, especially when it came to WrestleMania. And nobody sold the uh, the stunner like The Rock did. Right. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, maybe Trump. He kind of just fell, though. That's right. That's right. Now he's present. Now he's present. See if you get if you get Stone Cold Sun, you become present. Vince is next. Vince is next. Vince is next. Vince and the rest of the McMahon family. <laughs> All right, let's dive into the final freaking thought, guys. If you know what the final freaking thought is, we're just gonna pick some random questions of what happened in wrestling in the past week. Get our final thoughts and opinions on it before we dive into that. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms: uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at JW Podcast or Just Freaking Wrestling. And make sure you check out our podcast that we release every single week as we dive into Season 3 here. Uh, obviously, we're on uh, Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. But now that we have video content, it's also on YouTube. So make sure you hit the notification bell and you subscribe to any platform you listen to. And check out the shows that drop every single week. We ask for fan interaction all the fucking time. So yes. make sure you guys interact with us. Facebook is the best place for us. To interact with you, because that's where uh, the freaking five questions get dropped. That's where we release the upcoming independent shows that are coming out, as well as the thing we're about to do right now, which is the Dizzle J pick of the week. So I went back, and like I, I was reading some things this week, and a name crossed. Was it Nikki Cross? It was not Nikki Cross. It was Lance Storm. So I went and I found Lance Storm versus Chris Jericho War '95. So I went back and I watched that. I was like, all right, let's put this up. 
Because Lance Storm, I just I believe he recently just had to close the school, and obviously all with Chris Jericho and his rise, it kind of just made sense for me to put these two together and see what happens. Yeah. I liked. Uh, God, I think my favorite part of him was in WCW when he held like all the gold. Yeah, I made him all Canadian. Yeah, I, he, he never could work a mic. Very stale. Yeah, but his in ring was just phenomenal. Check it out. It'll be posted later on tonight, about yeah. 7 o'clock-ish. Yeah, it, really, it releases about the same day as the uh, podcast. Yeah. So. All right, Jay, I got my first question for you in the final right. thought. Let's do it. All right, who is the first person to drop their title in the Undisputed Era? Strong. Why are you sitting like that? Uh, this is about the this isn't wins Ben Stein's money, man. Is that a rush? Up? No, because that's why it's not Ben Stein's money. I was, I was... Roddy Strong's first uh, Roddy job Strong. title? Gotcha. Oh. Yeah, it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this isn't new, man. I, I asked this question earlier. I know you're thinking, like, well, it's a new season. The last season ended last week. There's no break here. There, there's... Come on now. The... Goddamn. But, but so you don't wear a 33% there, there, shirt. Mar- 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 marijuana mar- is mar- mar- <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> like going with old gold dust you got electrocuted? Yeah. <laughs> so should Brock have to defend the title at the Rumble, in the Rumble match? I think it'd be, oh fuck, yes, but I don't want him to. Really? Because if he does, he's gonna win. Okay. But I think it'd be a nice like stipulation to add to it, because you know like just Paul him and him going out just trying to be badasses about it and like kind of like stick it to him. Cool. I don't want him because then he's going to fucking win. Brock's going to be champion at uh, WrestleMania. Either that or he's going to lose it and then win it back at fucking like Fast Lanes or whatever the fuck they're doing in February. <laughs> Great um, balls of fire. Yeah. But hey, I'm glad you asked that question because my next question was uh, if Brock Lesnar is to be eliminated from the Royal Rumble, who's going to do it? <laughs> There's is either Braun or Rey Mysterio. <laughs> Really? Yeah. All right, I had a different thought. What do you Keith have? Lee. Ooh. That pounce, that fucking pounce he does. I mean, they're definitely pushing Keith Lee huge. I think Keith Lee's one of those guys that Vince wants to pull to the main roster. The Triple H is saying, no. Nah. Yeah. But. You see, leave my guys alone. I would love to see Keith Lee take on Brock Lesnar. Oh, man. I'd, I'd kind of like to see Riddle. Riddle would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Riddle, I could see take I wanted them to run shoot at each other. Where do I see taking on Tyson Fury? Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's just too bony shit. Uh, probably Cain Velasquez will show up. I From what I'm reading about this Royal Rumble, that they're trying to get top tier names. Yeah. So you're not going to see a lot of the... WrestleMania main event. Cain Velasquez versus Brock Lesnar versus Tyson Fury. Oh, God. It could happen because it it's could fucking happen. Vince McMahon. I hope to God it's my way. Okay, go ahead. How do you feel about DDP returning to the ring next week? <clears throat> I've always loved DDP, but I just don't know. I mean, I've only seen him like maybe throw out a couple diamond cutters and shit like that. So, and I'm a big fan of long hair DDP, long hair blue jeans yeah, and DDP, like uh, blue collar DDP. Yeah, um, I guess it just kind of depends on who his uh, opponent is and uh, like you know how he goes. I mean, obviously he's doing yoga. I mean. And I'm sure he can still go in the ring being, like, I want to say he's, what, 60 now, 62? No, he's, he's got to be younger than that. No. He didn't start wrestling until he was 30, man. Like, 35 and, like, 97. I, I figured he's probably about the same age. Well, I guess Nash and him are probably about their 60s, too, aren't they? Yeah, he's up there. I mean, I he, he is up there in age. Um, but I guess it just depends on what uh, and who his opponent is. Maybe it's MJF? I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, don't remember, I just I remember hearing that he's yeah. in the ring next week. Uh, what do you think about the rumors about Paige returning at the Royal Rumble? I have not heard that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she put out a tweet that says, like, you know, like, my career's not over yet. 2020 is uh, my year. And a lot of people speculate that maybe she's uh, coming back at uh, the Royal Rumble. I mean, her mom posted something saying, like, my daughter's not going to wrestle at WWE again. But, I mean... Mm. There's a lot of rumors on Edge fucking coming back, and you know he's saying no, but it could just be throwing the fucking scent off. I, w- I would love for her to have her in in ring career back. She was one of the few that I did enjoy. 
If she comes back in the Royal Rumble, does she win the Royal Rumble? No. Should she win the Royal Rumble? Should she? Yes. Will she? No. No. Okay. Uh, what feud will go from now until Mania? I would love to see the Black Murphy uh, feud go until WrestleMania. That's what I was thinking, too. It's probably going to be in the fucking AOP, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, Big Show fucking feud. Because they still need Seth, Seth Rollins to get his shit in. <laughs> so, um, I think maybe even Daniel Bryan versus The Fiend might. Ooh. So, I think a lot of the feuds that are going on right now will trail on into WrestleMania. Uh, probably the Asuka, Becky Lynch will still be, too. Sounds like that one. I think it will. I think it's going to turn to like a fatal four-way thing with Charlotte and Baszler. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Fatal five-way Ronda Rossi. Yeah. I was going to say, you're forgetting somebody. Yeah, I forgot about Ronda. That's my bad. Everybody should. Wait, six-way. I forgot about Alexa Bliss because she's going to need her shit back in, too. I'm probably fatal seven way because Rhea Ripley's really uh, becoming a huge star. I don't think Ripley's coming to the main roster anytime soon. You know what? Eight. Eight, eight way because uh, Naomi's going to make a return eventually, right? <laughs> Shit, speaking of which, a nine way because uh, <laughs> fucking. Uh, That's it. Yeah. Battle Nia, Royal. Nia Jax is uh, going to have to make a return too. A battle Royal for the Women's Championship. Yeah. <laughs> so, nine, nine way <laughs> for the Raw. Good. A nine-way? No, a ten-way, because Sasha Banks will probably be pissed if she doesn't get a title match. So. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. She'll take her ball and go home again. Maybe 11, because Stephanie will probably want to get in there, because Triple H probably won't have a match this year. And why not blow the streak? <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> 12, they're going to dig May Young's ass up. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Reanimation <laughs> jutsu. <laughs> My turn? Yeah. I've, what do you feel about the uh, about the shit that's been going around about Sergeant Slaughter's fake military? Uh, I've read something about that. I people mean, are people are blown up about him lying about being in the fucking military. It's dumb as fuck. I don't I'm, really I'm, give a yeah, shit. I'm gonna say it's fucking dumb because first off, if people remember anything of the fucking '80s in wrestling, like they just made fucking storylines to make kayfabe real. Yeah. So who I mean, gives I, a shit? Because at one point in time, he was working for Saudi Arabia, too. So... Yeah, I don't think uh, he ever wore, like, a full-blown fucking uniform and shit. No. So, it's fucking dumb. And he, he used a lot of his popularity for good, too. Yeah. So, it's not like he... Well, it's 2019. People want to blow up about shit. Oh, well, yeah. It's fucking 20, 2019. I bet, when I, went, I, bet, I bet when I did the fucking go to... Uh, 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 there's going to be a fucking letter. Oh, jeez. From some fucking Tourette's Foundation saying, like, How dare you? <laughs> monetized. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> of the current roster, who would be the biggest shock to win the Rumble? Like the fuck, I could not have seen that coming. Buddy Murphy. That would be the biggest shock? No, probably Mike and Oz. No, I lied. Uh, Kerr Hawkins. <laughs> that would be a pretty big shot. Right? Right? Somebody who could win it, that would be surprising if they did win it. If you went that route, Alistair Black. Oh, definitely. Could definitely win the pay-per-view. He would have be a good matchup against The Fiend. But if you want to go for like, the dumbest surprise, yeah, probably Kurt Hawkins. <laughs> I, I can see that. No, Black, no, no, Dio Madden. The uh, the announcer that Brock put through the table. Oh Jesus! The commentating table who went back to wrestling who put a comment out like my goal for 2020 is beating Brock like a bitch. Good luck. Yeah. Him winning, facing Brock at WrestleMania, <laughs> opening the show, finishing up in eight seconds, so he got his fucking plane and head home. <laughs> I tell you what, if that fucking happened. <laughs> We we own it. It's ours. I'm telling you right here. Deal Madden wins the Royal Rumble. Show ends with a this is bullshit chant. <laughs> Tell him to go to WrestleMania and open up the show with fucking Brock Lesnar. Bell rings. Gets knocked the fuck out. 
pins him and leaves, and the show begins with a this is bullshit chant. Yeah. It ends and begins. Right? And of course it ends with a fucking Roman Reigns main event. Oh. Probably facing Baron Corbin. I got it. I just did. Is there your last one? I got one more. Oh. Alright, so WD just came out with a new um, um, uh, video YouTube show called If It's On The Internet. Basically, stars will pull rumors off the internet yeah. and then officially answer them. Has there been any kind of rumor that you heard online that you never got an answer to that you would like to get an answer to? Or even like in the past, like something happened, they're like, man, if I could ask a question about that, I would love to fucking hear about it. Honestly, I don't even know. I've never even thought about it before. Right? It's a hard fucking question. Like, I, was yeah. I was skeptical on like doing it. I was like... like because, I mean, there's I mean, there's a couple, like, I was even thinking of one for me, but it's, like, it's hard to, like, really narrow down, like, what kind of questions. Because I, I know how wild they were back in the day, so I would love to, I would love to talk to guys about their party days. Yeah. Just to see how, how bad they got. Mm -hmm. to, not Jeff Hardy, I just, yeah. I think that'd be a little weird. But, yeah. like, Shawn Michaels and. Yeah, my, my biggest, my biggest thing is, like, like, I would like to know, because remember uh, the Royal Rumble? When Batista and John Cena went over at the same time and Vince came out, I want to know how much of that was shoot and how much of it was a work. Yeah. Because I keep hearing a lot of, like, you know, they weren't supposed to go over at the same time. Uh, well, the, uh, the, oh, when Sheamus and Cena fought fought each other and Cena stepped See? to the table. Oh, yeah, when he fell back. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. See that? Yeah. I would definitely like to know that. Yep. Uh, uh, oh. How many of those Cena rules were real? <laughs> those Cena house rules. Oh, God. <laughs> he, he came off like such a douche in that show. I know. I, the personal opinion, of course. But mm -hmm. uh, New Beginnings, will Sentinel finally show his true colors? Mm, you should probably rephrase that. Will Sentinel even show up? Oh. <laughs> um, I don't... I, I don't know what his problem is. I honestly, like, couldn't fathom, like, what goes inside his fucking head. Yeah. It's like, he sits there and, like, I just, I don't, I don't fucking know. And I don't want to get inside that fucking goopy, fucking rotten-ass vegetable of a fucking scalp. But it's like, if he's not, if he's trying, it doesn't show. <laughs> <laughs> like, if he's, if, like, in his mind, he's putting together shit, and he's like, this is gonna be great. Like he has no idea what fucking wrestling is. No. Yeah, and it's nothing. I mean, like the matches he put together is great. I mean, he he utilizes the talent to a degree, but he hasn't used anything from Bulletproof. Yeah, it's just it's how he sets it up and how he thinks wrestling should be. Yeah. And like his responses to shit, like when we had him come on the show and discuss like you know like his issues and stuff. Like he circled the question so much. Like, there was never a straight answer for him. Right. So, I don't know what's going on with him. Again, I would kind of like some answers on the why he didn't, like, do anything about the Maverick Cage. Beat down. Uh, yeah. Like, that's something huge I want to hear about. And uh, also, if there's any repercussions from uh, the issues that led in the main event uh, between Holiday and Hunter with his kids and shit. 